Good morning, party people. It's the morning of the first day of my mastering index tuning class, and I was just setting up my audio, and I thought, hey, why not do a speed round for office hours and knock out a few of your questions. If you want to ask a question about SQL Server or the Microsoft Data Platform, uh, feel free to hit the link in the video description. That's where you post questions. So first up, we have Engine Horror who asks, uh, hey Brent, What's your opinion on page and row compression in general? So it depends on what's the problem you're trying to solve. Always remember that. What's the problem I'm trying to solve in SQL Server? That determines which tool that you pick up. I always think of myself as a carpenter with all kinds of tools scattered across my desk. If I need to reduce the amount of time that it takes to scan storage, read data from storage and bring it up into memory, then uh, compressing data on disk can help. Uh, but otherwise, if you're not having those problems and that's not the problem you're trying to solve, then absolutely you can hit the uh, problems that you described there in your question. Next up, Pony says, is the Map Toolkit still the best uh, tool for discovering SQL servers within a company? As far as I know, it's the only one that I'm aware of. So for me, that answer would be yes. DBA Champion asks, what monitor would you recommend for a DBA? For me, the for the primary, the biggest one that you can afford with the highest resolution that you can afford, and a side monitor that's usually like portrait. I, I like like a 1080p portrait monitor. And you don't see that in my setup here, because it's just for streaming to keep things simple. I usually use just a laptop. But I like a side display for that way I can put things like email or the, the help desk panel that I'm working on, like uh, a Jira or whatever, uh, Slack, things like that, just communication type stuff. Uh, next up, Monkey asks, have you ever considered working with Microsoft? It's a tough sell because of the money that I make doing training and consulting. It would be hard for me to switch over to Microsoft and make the same amount of money. Uh, but that's just because of the weirdo position that I'm in in the market. Uh, you might notice that Microsoft has been hoovering up. They've been uh, vacuuming up all kinds of uh, data professionals who do blog and present people who have regular quote unquote jobs working for other companies, uh, who, not the ones who've like started their own consulting firm or whatever. Uh, but it's very common to see Microsoft hire those kinds of vocal people. It's also kind of a bummer uh, because you see this total brain drain from things like the MVP program, where it used to be all about uh, community presentation and giving back and helping other people learn. And these days, I'm not exactly sure what the MVP program is measuring because there's a lot of people who never do a blog post, never do a video, never do user group sessions or anything like that. Uh, so it's, there's been a real marked decline in the voice of of the Microsoft data platform out there. And to some extent, I think that's Microsoft's own fault for hiring so many of the vocal community experts, which is tough because they don't do that work inside Microsoft either. There's not a lot of evangelism going on. Uh, next up, uh, Monkey asks, do you recommend performing transaction log backups into one TRN file or each log file should be separate? For me, each log file should be separate. I don't understand what people think they're going to gain by uh, putting all of their eggs in one basket. If any of the transaction log backups fail, for example, you can run into problems where that file becomes unusable. Uh, next up, Mike asks, have you ever implemented dynamic data masking? No, because when it came out, uh, it had security vulnerabilities where people could craft a query to work their way around uh, and see the data that was supposed to be masked. So since then, I've never really played with it after seeing several bugs with it. Um, your second part of your question was, do you think in-house developers who have read access to production should or should not be able to? That all depends on your security department. Go check with your security team and see what they allow. That's not an opinion question. That's a fact-based question based on what your team's, what your company's security team allows. James Adams says, will the senior DBA class ever come back in stock? No. I don't want to teach that. I just don't enjoy teaching it. I think in the year 2022, it's hard to have a class called Senior DBA class that doesn't teach automation with PowerShell, and I just don't want to do automation with PowerShell. It's not something that I find personally fulfilling uh, is scripting multiple server actions. 
it's I think it's a core thing that if you call yourself a senior DBA, a production DBA in the year 2022, that you should totally be doing those things. I just don't want to teach them. It's not fun for me in any way, shape or form. Uh, next up, let's see here. B Tree House asks, I must optimize the database of a multi-tenant app. The first column of my indexes is tenant ID. This causes parameter sniffing issues. Would it be an acceptable use case for optimize for? Man, it's such a great question. And I wonder if there's anyone who has classes on parameter sniffing. I wonder if they've put together things that would teach you like the fundamentals of parameter sniffing. And then after you got done with that, they would also teach you how to master parameter sniffing. And they may describe the pros and cons of the different solutions on there. They might even spend days working with you on it, showing you all kinds of lab exercises so that you can see the different solutions in action. That's a great idea. Oh, I, no, I, I got nothing. I don't know what that could possibly be. Tough nut, which sounds like tough nut, which is interesting. Uh, what types of performance issues do you like to use SP Human Events for? For me, compiles and recompiles is huge. I adore using it for compilations, queries that use option recompile, queries that are sporadically recompiling due to things like temp table usage. It's amazing for that. Uh, Lalandra says, who's the Brentos are for all things Power BI? That would be the YouTube channel Guy in a Cube, which is Adam Saxton and Patrick LeBlanc. They do a fantastic job, all kinds of stuff, totally free out there. They also have training classes uh, in as well. I love those guys. They're great. Uh, can I join you asks, hi, I use Azure SQL DB and I'm running a query against a view with a where clause. What you're asking is parameter sniffing. So I gave a sarcastic answer to some jerkwad earlier who just uh, didn't want to go pay for training classes. What's going to open up a whole new world for you is going to be just knowing the term parameter sniffing. The issue that you're facing is called parameter sniffing. And if you just Google for that, you can get tons of free advice. And then when you're ready to get past that, and then that's where my training classes come in. But by all means, Google first. You know, There's tons of free advice out on there that'll at least get you started on that journey. Uh, Dom asks, how would you describe your driving style? Uh, are you slowly cruising around looking at the scenery or do you drive a bit more sporty? Um, I tend to be all about a, like a Sunday afternoon drive, like chill, uh, mellow until I get to specific roads. There are some roads like Malibu canyons or the Vegas Valley of Fire State Park. Uh, that are just phenomenal for driving, as long as you know that the roads are clear, like do a lap through them first, understand what's happening that day, because sometimes they can have bike act, or bike uh, uh, races on them, for example. Uh, but most of the time, I, I tend to be pretty chill. You, you notice, too, the, the, you say appear to be engineered to be driven pretty fast. So I have a Ferrari 328. It's slower than a modern minivan. I have a Porsche 944 Turbo. That's uh, It's a stick, so it's still enjoyable uh, to do speedy driving with. That's the most comfortable car in terms of fast driving. The shifter's fantastic, but it's still not fast. Uh, like in, almost any modern minivan will smoke the historical cars that I have. Um, the one exception is the Jaguar. The Jaguar is crazy fast. And then the last one, uh, Soul asks, Howdy, sir. How come you haven't gone bald based on recent driving videos? Your hair is gorgeous. Thank you. Um, I'm blessed with my mom's side of the family's hair. My dad's side goes bald pretty quickly. Uh, but my mom's side of the family has really thick hair. The flip of that is my mom's side of the family tends to be gray by the time that they're like 30, 35. I happen to like gray hair. It served me well in my career because I was this young goofball, and it helped me get taken more seriously, I think. I had a more mature kind of look about me when I wanted to, uh, but uh, I, so I never minded the gray hair thing at all. All right, and that is our office hours for this morning. Looks like in less than 10 minutes, we've knocked out a whole bunch of questions there. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see y'all on the next office hours. Adios.